Let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks and praise because it has pleased you to keep us to see this moment that you have prepared for us to hear from you. We therefore ask that by your spirit you speak your word to us. May these words not be used against us on the last day, but help us to imbibe these words into our hearts so that we'll live by them and bear good fruits that will make you to say on the last day, welcome, good and faithful servants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please have your seat. The topic of today's message across the whole church of Nigeria is God's wrath engaged on righteousness. God's wrath engaged on righteousness. We know that God is a merciful God and that God is love. God is forgiving and that God does not take records of evil. But there is something that some of us don't actually pay attention to when it comes to who God is. The Bible says, Amos 3, 3, can two work together except they agree. Before two people can work together, there has to be some level of agreement. And what is actually this argument about? Okay, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. You do this for me, I do this for you. This thing, you don't do it for me. And you take time to understudy the person. Uh, why some marriages crash is because people just focus on the aspect of love, 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 and don't even think and look at the other side that what offends this person? Uh, you look at our society, everybody is not the same. There are some persons, they easily go angry. Some people, they don't talk at all. Some, they, they are harsh. And you still see some people living in peace with them. And someone who does, who is far away, will just ask, hey, how are you able to live with this, your husband? How are you able to live with this, your wife? They are able to live with them in peace because they have studied them. Many of us have not studied God to know who God is. Today's topic is God's wrath engaged on righteousness. Though God is merciful, God also is a consuming fire. Let's look at the text. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 Verses 17, 18, and 20. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who are the truth in unrighteousness. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Today we live in a world whereby the law is how it seems good to you. We are in worry, or you may be a visitor. But worry is one of the most lawless places I have ever stayed. It. That even those who are supposed to enforce the law are the number one breakers of the law. For instance, look at uh, the police. They will be the ones to blow one way. Look at uh, even Nonare, uh, some of these road tra traffic... Uh, Men, they will be the one to break the law. They will tell you, 
What do you have to do? What can you do? We are the law. The best way to enforce the law is to keep it. We should not forget the whole essence of today's message is to open our eyes and bring us to remembrance. Just to give us a reminder that God is going to judge every activity in this world. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 29 says that God is a consuming fire. Some of us know God very well. Some of us know all the good, good scriptures about God in the Bible. But we have failed to understand and to know that God is a consuming fire. God has emotions. You can please God. You can pleasure God with good works. You can make God to be angry. You can make God to become sorrowful. You can also make God to become joyful. Just the way you have emotions, that is the way, the same way God has emotions. Now we are enjoying the mercy of God. Now we are enjoying the love of God. But by the time we seal our hearts and make sure that we don't obey God and live like his children, then we will not see the other side of God. But it's my prayer that God will help us not to see his other side in the name of Jesus. In the Old Testament, the Old Testament that was read to us, 2 Samuel chapter 12. Uh, let's just open our Bibles, 2 Samuel, Samuel chapter 12. Some of us, we know God as a very merciful God. Yes, God is merciful. God is love. But there are some things that we misunderstand about God. God is forgiving, but a lot of times the consequences of our sins remain. How many of us here, God has ever told one on one that you are a man, you are a woman after my own heart? Has God ever told anybody like that here? But David, God said, this is a man after my own heart. This man. He knows what pleases me. He's a man after my heart. When David fell into sin, God forgave him the sin. But God made sure he reaped the consequences of the sin. It is, this is the same God we are serving. The same God. The same God. 2 Samuel chapter 12. Let me read from verse, um, verse 8. 2 Samuel 12, 8. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wife into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have, I would moreover have given up to thee such and such things. Look at verse 12. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this, I will do this thing before all Israel, before the sun. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemy of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And David lost four of his children. We are talking about a king. David was a prophet. David was a musician, a choir master. David was one of the best of humans to God. People who have passed through this world. David was among the first class of them. God said, this man is a man after my own heart. But when David messed up, look at what happened. As at when David was looking at a woman taking her bath, 
He called the servant and asked one of the servants, Who is this woman? And the servant said, The servant added a little message to the answer that this is Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. As a servant of God, as a custodian of the Lord, as a prophet of the Lord, he's supposed to have withdrew himself. But because he had already committed the adultery in his heart, he found it very difficult to withdraw himself. He took another person's wife, impregnated her, discovered that he could not hide the sin. He took Uriah from the bush, from the war front, made Uriah drunk so that he would sleep with the wife. But God is too wise. If God one naked person there, eh? Somebody was saying, okay, our bishop during our Bible study, he was telling us, he said, we should be careful, he was advising us. He said, if you are at a low level and you don't want to change, if God wants to disgrace you, if you have heart in your heart, he will, sometimes he will allow you to climb to the top so that when you will fall, the fall, everybody will hear the noise. Blah. We may try to hide sin, but sin, sin will never hide us. We may just try our best to hide it, but sin, it will not hide us. Uh, yesterday, I saw, I spotted a video, uh, a policeman, police officer, who went into another man's wife. And the man consulted some uh, witch doctors, and both of them come together. And as such, when they were videoing them, they were recording them with mobile phone. Well, I, I was hearing one man say, hey, it's a police officer, please don't record him, don't record him. Not in Nigeria. Not in Nigeria. See, we always find us out if we hide it. David did not hear this is the wife of Uriah the Hittite. So when God was to punish him, God forgave him. See, why am I laying all this stress? God hates sin and is going to punish all unrighteousness. Listen, we live in a time where even the government that's supposed to, I'm talking about not just the government of Nigeria, the government that's supposed to go there and represent the people. Many of our world governments are representing Satan. Molech in the Bible, they used to sacrifice children to. Till today, they still sacrifice children to. Molech. There is one place they call Bohemian Groove. Bohemian Groove abroad. Where top politicians go to. People, even those who are living around, they think that that place is a resort center. But it's a secret society. I watched one man went there with secret cameras and recorded the service in the night. How they offer sacrifices to Molech. They took organ, big organ to the bush, worshipping Satan. Top, top politicians. Your heart will fail. It's on YouTube. It was uh, Alex Jones revealed this thing. It's on YouTube. Bohemian Groove. You see the secret there. So, People, this is a time that people gang up to rebel against God. And today there is a law, late abortion, that the law says that, you know, abortion in Nigeria is a criminal offense. I hope you know that. Eh? But then, even the law in many states now, the law will even protect your underage child who is pregnant. The Lord covers the child to do abortion without the consent of the parents. It did end there. The worst part of it now is that even moments before delivery, the law protects the mother and the doctor to deliver the baby through the normal birth canal. But before completing the delivery, they will kill the child. After nine months, it is still called abortion. Is that abortion? 
A woman went to the doctor one day, a doctor who is a Christian. The woman said, doctor, look at the baby in my hand. And as, as you can see, I'm also pregnant. By mistake, I'm pregnant. And the doctor said, what do you want us to do? She, she said, doctor, I want us to carry out abortion or this pregnancy. And the doctor said, you don't want, you want to space your children? And the woman said, yeah. She said, don't worry, I have a solution. Say, doctor, what can we do? Say, don't worry, who's present? You want one to go, right? Okay, let us kill this one you are carrying so that the one that is coming can have space. Wickedness in the land. People have turned their back on God. All the sectors in the society have become so rotten. I tell you, God is angry, oh. God, God is angry. God is angry. Is the church an exception? The church, is it an exception? We heard about Reverend King, Abi. We are reading about Reverend King. Reverend King in Nigeria. I heard that the man is still alive because nobody wants to sign so that the man can face his consequences. I heard, I heard though, that they passed death sentence on him. But today, nobody has signed so that the man can die. Who used to sleep with people's wives? In fact, a woman I read over the newspaper said, she served, a married woman served Reverend King food naked. A lot of deception in town in the name of God. And it pains me when I see supposed men of God quote God when God never spoke to them. It is an unforgivable offense for a man of God to say, the Spirit of God is telling me now that God told me last night. The Lord is telling me there are 20 people here. It is an unforgivable offense. I said it in the morning and I will say it again. If I will fall to that level of quoting God when God has never spoken to me. Let God take my life before I fall to that level. Because the judgment is going to be terrible. Jesus said, many of you will say, we cast that demons in your name. In your name, we heal the sick. And he will tell them, get out of here. You workers of iniquity. How many of us went to school and we did mock exam? Mock exam. You just assume that you are in the exam hall. And you test yourself, you put your alarm and you begin to write exam. You have not entered the exam hall. That is what we call self-examination. To test yourself, whether you are in the face. The judgment of God is coming. God is quiet because he is not in a hurry to punish anybody. I know there are lots of people who change from one church to the other because they are avoiding the truth. Listen, let me tell you a little story. A young man was going to answer in the law court. And while he parked his vehicle, an old man was in his front with a very old vehicle. An old vehicle. So the young man was shouting on the old man, shout, 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 idiots. I have a case to go and answer. You are here delaying me. By the time the young man got to the courts, and they said, court rise. A murder case. It was the old man he shouted at. That was the judge. A lot of us have forgotten about who God is. When they tell us the truth, get out with your truth. Today, if you are a speaker of truth, you are, it's like you are an ancient fashion. And that you should just go to one bush and hide yourself. Because the truth today is like insults. People can accommodate a criminal in the society, but 
They find it difficult to accommodate somebody that is speaking the truth. I want to tell us one big truth today. That majority of Christians we end up in hell. This is elections, right? This February 16, we are going to be doing elections. They have started sharing rice, sharing salt, sharing money, and some Christians we collect. And I said it, I did a video which I posted on Facebook and YouTube. If you are a Nigerian and you know somebody is a thief, if you vote for a criminal, you know God will judge you. If you know this person is a criminal and God wakes you up February 16, you carry your PVC, collect money, whether you collect money or not, and you vote for a thief, God will judge you. Enough of the nonsense. We pray in church and we pray, which die, which die, which die. The bigger witch are the corrupt politicians. Let me tell you. The witches, they go to covers at night and cover the nation with darkness. But the physical witchcraft, they fly by day. The money they're supposed to use to bring electricity, they are, they are doing it kuru kuru. They carry the money to their covers. Do you know their covers? Switzerland. UK, America, and America should not be saying we are corrupt. Switzerland, UK, they should not be saying we are corrupt because all the money stolen in Africa end up there. All this huge money, they pass through their banks. They are the most corrupt people. So when we clap for those people and we are firing small, small witches that meet in trees, we are firing them. I'm not saying they are doing good things. And then when we see the bigger witchcrafts, the bigger witches and wizards, we clap for them. God will judge us. God will judge us. Because our bad roads have consumed more people than the coven in the night. Nigerians are crossing the dead Red Sea, crossing oceans, and they are dying and perishing every day. Some are in Libya today because somebody hijacked the wealth of the nation. May God judge all Kabasi, this Nigeria, in the name of Jesus. The judgment of God is coming. Wherever you are hearing in my voice, the judgment of God is coming. And Nigerians, it shall be hell for us. This Nigeria is hell for you. Nigeria, whether you are rich, whether you are poor, Nigeria is hell. Go to better people country, you see lights. They do dark, you know if they know. May the Lord deliver us. What is your stand? If I die today, if you die today, will you make it? That is the question. If you know you will not make it, it's time to ask God for mercy. It's time to change. Finally, before we pray, I have one big question for all of us. Do you know why Jesus sent on the cross? My father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Did God forsake Jesus that moment? Eh? It's not no. If you say no, it means you are saying Jesus lied. Jesus said, my God, my God, my father, my father, why have you forsaken? It was because Jesus was carrying the sins of the whole world upon himself. Though he did not sin. Remember the cross. The cross of Calvary was the altar of sacrifice. Where the Lamb of God was slain for our sins. If God could not look at Jesus when he was carrying sin, not because he was a sinner, but because he was made sin for us, do you think he will look at me? Do you think he will look at me, look at you? If God did not allow Lucifer to remain in heaven because of sin, do you think, somebody who has been in heaven, God did not allow him to remain, do you think he will allow us to enter if we fail to change? Let's call ourselves to order. If you want to go to hell, there are false prophets everywhere who will give you all you need to go to hell. And God will punish them if they fail to repent because they are spoiling this work for us.
If you have not repented, repent. So that on the last day, we will enter rejoicing. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you for your word that we have heard today. We ask that you cause our hearts to be fertile. Even in our sleep, in our dreams, continue to expand it on these words. So that when we live by them, we'll be welcome on the day of judgment. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.